Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be looking at the House Atreides in Dune Imperium. Now what we usually do with these types of series is we're going to be going over the abilities, we're going to be going over uh, basically what makes each character unique, which there's two under House Atreides, and then after that I'm just going to give you five starter tips to basically improve your first game with these characters. So first we are going to jump Jump right in with Paul Atreides. So, thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. So first we've got Paul Atreides. Now his ongoing ability is called Prescience and this allows him to look at the top of his deck at any time. So this could be during your opponent's turn, this could be during your turn, this could be right after you draw a card from the top of the deck, this could be any time, you've got to remember that. So basically just always know exactly what card's coming up next. And then his Signet Ring ability allows him to draw a card. So kind of goes hand in hand there. You can check what cards on the top of your deck and then with the Signet Ring ability, you can draw that card. Now for my first tip, I would suggest to not underestimate Paul's complexity. Yes, it shows that he only has one complexity symbol at the top here, making him one of the easiest characters to play, but I'm going to have to disagree with this just due to the fact that his options are very, very wide, meaning that you have a lot more decision space with this character. And to fully make use of his ability, you have to build a deck that's tailored to his ability. And don't worry, I'm going to give you some suggestions a little bit later. But just don't underestimate the fact that he might not come as easily for you as you first thought he would be. Now my second tip is that you are going to be wanting to focus on gaining cards with Paul. And the reason for that is because you can use the prescience ability to check what the next card is. This can be really powerful when you're saving up for certain cards or when you're just amping up for a certain ability or maybe you need to get to a certain agent space. But one thing to keep note of is that none of the reveal abilities of cards will have draw cards on it, meaning that those are all going to be on agent abilities. So when you're grabbing cards to add to your deck, always be weary as to what location those draw cards actually can give you access to. Some options that I really like are Thufir Hawat, as well as the Bene Gesserit Initiate. And for my third tip, Arakin is a very important city to claim. So if it comes up in the conflicts, definitely put a little bit more effort on making sure that you can claim it with your own claim token. The reason for that is that this is a really good space that you could potentially be going to draw another card during your turn. You don't really want your opponents there, but if they do go there, benefiting from it with your claim token there makes it a little bit better. Also, if you can't get to that one, the research station is another good option to get three brand new cards, which is a super, super powerful ability, but you're going to have to make a relationship with the Fremen likely in order to get enough water to actively be going to that space. However, if you make it work, this is a pretty amazing way to make full use of that prescience ability throughout the game. Now, Paul has a lot of potential when it comes to the Spice Must Flow cards. Why is that? The basic reason is that he can check what's on top of his deck, but also that if you are focusing on drawing more cards, you're going to have more persuasion in those reveal abilities. So it's just kind of natural that he might be snagging a couple of those throughout the game. And these cards are nine persuasion cost cards that are always available in the game until they run out but they are super, super good because they also give you a victory point and then will provide spice whenever you draw them for the rest of the game. So yes, this is one way to make active use of his drawing card abilities, but another thing to do would be to make sure that you get a seat on the High Council as soon as possible to get that extra to Persuasion.
Now, one of the ways that I really like to play Paul is I try to focus on a more Bene Gesserit styled deck. Why do I want to focus on Bene Gesserit cards? Well, they kind of do everything that you want to do as Paul. They allow you to oftentimes trash cards from your deck, which is good to kind of thin it down, especially if you're going for the more spice must flow strategy. But they also allow you to draw new cards and they also benefit from having multiple of the same Bene Gesserit cards so that you can get different abilities. They are very, very useful and oftentimes do a little bit of everything that you need to do as Paul anyways. And they also provide a little bit more persuasion than some of the other factions, so it can be very, very helpful. So I've got three cards here that I recommend you checking out just because I think that they're very good and also they would pretty much work in any deck, but together they are even better. Let's check them out. So first off, I've got Other Memory. This is a four persuasion Bene Gesserit faction card. This allows you to either go to circle or triangle spaces. You can either draw one card or you can draw a Bene Gesserit card from your discard pile. Super powerful. And then we've got Gene Manipulation. This is a three persuasion cost card, allows you to go to hexagons and circles. It will allow you to trash a card as well as if you have another Ben Gesserit card in play, you can gain two spice. This is extraordinarily good. And lastly, I've got the six persuasion cost Emperor and Ben Gesserit card, which allows you to go to the Emperor spaces or the Ben Gesserit spaces. And it says that if you have another Ben Gesserit card in play, each opponent discards two cards. I really like the reveal ability of this as well, which allows you two persuasion and two spice. So that is it for Paul, and like I said, I think a lot of players will underestimate him by his complexity level, but trust me, give him a try when you start. He is a very interesting character, and I think he has so much different uses, which I think is really awesome and something to appreciate in a game like this. Now, let's go ahead and talk about Paul's father, the great Leto Atreides. Now, starting off with Leto's abilities, whenever he sends an agent to a Lance Rod location, he is able to discount it by one Solari. This is really, really powerful. And now let's go over to his Signet Ring ability, which is called Prudent Diplomacy. This allows him to spend one spice to gain one influence with a faction where an opponent has more influence than you. Having that Solari discount on those Lance Rod places will actually have a lot more of a benefit than you might think. For example, this puts the High Council at only 4 Solari instead of 5. This also puts the Mentat instead of 2 down to just 1. And this also allows you to rally troops for only 3 instead of 4. You are going to want to try and take advantage of this as soon as as possible. With that adjustment in the price, you will likely be able to get some of these things earlier than other players. And I would also suggest that the Mentat is actually a better option now that it's only one Solari. Pretty incredible options with Leto for sure. Now his Signet Ring ability is very interesting, and oftentimes I'm not really sure with how best to use it, but I want to make full use of it every time I can. So what can you do in order to help you at least to be making use on it? I have found that leaving one track and not going to it can actually provide very helpful because then you can just use the Prudent Ring ability on that one influence track. So you will likely always be able to go up on it because you're not focusing on it with your actual agents. You'll be lower in that track for most of the game, but over the course of you drawing that Signet Ring four times or so, you will have gained a couple victory points or at least influence that is higher than your opponents really expected you to eventually get. And the bigger benefit of that is really that you don't have to focus on that track as much. You can be putting more of your focus on three or two other tracks throughout the game. Now, I 
absolutely love playing the Duke because he is kind of like, I don't know, he can go and really any direction with what kinds of cards he can get. Having the Lance Rod discount really makes him a little bit easier to play, honestly, but figuring out what kind of deck works with him is pretty much up to you, which is really cool. So instead of telling you to go in a very particular direction, I just want to give you a very, very, very quick overview of each of the faction's cards and what they basically do for you overall. So starting with the Fremen, these add a lot of conflict points, so you are able to win a lot more conflicts with their types of cards usually. They also provide a lot of different types of agent abilities, whether it's drawing cards, gaining resources, that sort of thing. Then we've got the Emperor. He also helps with getting better conflicts and fighting, but they also help with Solari manipulation, whether it's trading in Solari for certain things or gaining Solari. And then we've got the Bene Gesserit. They are good at drawing cards as well as having a higher persuasion count, meaning that you can buy new cards easier. And then lastly, we've got the Spacing Guild, who also helps with drawing cards, but they also give you a lot of manipulation over spice, whether that's spending it for abilities or gaining it. Now, as my next tip, it kind of attaches to the one previous. I know that I said that you don't really have to go in any specific direction with this character, and I think that is really cool, but I still chose three cards that I think are very powerful for this particular character, and I want to go over those now, starting with the Carryall. This is a five persuasion cost card, no faction associated, allows you to go to triangle locations as well as you can double the base, not bonus, spice that you harvest with this agent. And its reveal ability also gives you one persuasion and one spice. Carryall is great. We've also got Firm Grip. This is a four persuasion cost Emperor card that allows you to spend two Solari to go up one of any of the tracks except the Emperor's. And if you have an alliance with the Emperor, you get four persuasion as a reveal ability. And lastly, the one that I think is going to work best with Lado specifically is Shifting Allegiances. This is a three persuasion cost card that allows you to go down in one influence track of your choice. You have to spend two spice, but then you can go up two influence on a different track. This can help because then you can manipulate his special signet ring ability to go right back up that track and then you're just higher on both fronts. Super good card for Lado. I would not pass it up. So Lado has got the powerful setup, having the discounted Lance Rod ability, as well as being able to go up influence tracks that he's not doing so good on. Lado is a great, great choice for a beginner player, I would say, because you can play him really well if you're taking the game more seriously, but also the discounted spaces allow you to be a little bit more loose with your Solari, which can really help in a tight spot. So I would say that Lado, really, really good if you just wanna get into the game and have a good game, no matter what you decide to try and do. So that is it for House Atreides. I really hope that this was something that you enjoyed today. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps the channel to be seen by more people. And that is really, at the end of the day, what we want to do here. So if you are interested in this series and want to see the upcoming videos, make sure to click that bell notification as well. And if you have any questions about this game or anything you would like to ask, you can go ahead and comment down below or you can leave me a question on my Instagram or Twitter, links in the description. I really hope this helped you out with Dune Imperium, but that is it for today. With that, let's go ahead and drop the beat.